so the floor is all yours. Uh, Antonella, for your paper that you did jointly together with Mark Gertler and Christopher Huckfeld on temporary layoffs, loss of recall and cyclical unemployment dynamics. Thank you so much. So thank you so much for having me in the program. It's really a great pleasure, not so great pleasure to be the second after this very, very interesting paper. So, um, so this is different topics, so it's going to be a top, uh, talk about temporary layoffs, loss of recall, which I'm going to define, and cyclical unemployment dynamics. And this is, as has been said, joint work with Mark Gertler and Chris Ackfeld, who just joined the Federal Reserve Board. So in this paper, what we basically do is uh, to both measure and models temporary layoffs and the role the temporary layoffs play for cyclical unemployment dynamics. And we are motivated, as you can imagine, by the unprecedented increase. It's going to be a paper about the US. By the unprecedented increase, and it's very different in the Euro era, in um, temporary layoffs in the recent uh, recessionary episodes, essentially about 15% of the workforce of employed workers was moved to temporary layoff at the onset of the COVID crisis. Now, uh, at the same time, uh, because this recent recession has a very unusual feature, we also want to look at some earlier evidence. So we want to think about a framework that can capture recent data, but also historical episodes, so that the framework can also be used uh, potentially for a future, to, to study future episodes. So what we do, we first document the contribution of temporary layoffs to unemployment dynamics starting in 1978. So we go back to 1978. So let me um, introduce a few definitions. So, so first of all, ex ante and ex, ex post, layoffs can be both temporary or permanent. And actually, um, many workers have some expectations, that's how temporary layoffs are measured, that they will go back to their previous job. And actually, many of those workers with such expectations, they, they actually go back to their previous job. Uh, because workers in temporary layoff have a high recall rate, high reemployment probabilities relative to workers in permanent unemployment. This flow from employment to temporary layoff is typically perceived as a flow that moderates cyclical unemployment dynamics. That's the traditional view. What we are going to emphasize instead is a different factor, and in particular related to the fact that those workers who are on temporary layoff, who exit unemployment employment to temporary layoff, may lose attachment, may lose connection to the, to the, to the job, to the previous employer over time. And um, a phenomenon that we are going to call loss of recall, loss of the recall option. And in this case, what happened is that uh, Layoff, where ex ante expected to be temporary, become ex post permanent, and in particular, they inherit the lower reemployment probability of permanent layoff workers. And so, we are going to argue that this second factor is instead playing a destabilizing uh, role for cyclical unemployment dynamics. So, what we do, we um, develop then, finally, a model of unemployment fluctuations that is going to distinguish between endogenous layoffs that are both temporary and permanent, as well as um, endogenous flows between the three labor market states that we are going to have in the model, employment, and two different types of unemployment, jobless unemployment, so these are going to be we, we adopt the, this terminology that has been introduced recently by Hall and Kudliak, jobless unemployment and temporary layoff unemployment. So jobless unemployment are workers who have some expectations to go back to their previous job. Sorry, they have no expectation, they're jobless, to go back to their previous job, and so they search for a new job. Uh, 
And temporary layoff and employment are workers who have some expectation to be recalled back, and so they wait, wait for recall. And a particular important flow is going to be the one between these two states, between temporary layoff and employment and jobless unemployment. Then we calibrate the model to pre-pandemic uh, data, and we show that the model uh, does well in uh, replicating some uh, business cycle facts. And finally, we turn the attention to the uh, COVID-19 labor market. So why we do that, I already mentioned that, so let me be quickly on these slides. We do that because we want to add to the traditional view that temporary layoff is a component of total unemployment that plays a stabilizing role because of the high recall rates. Uh, we want to, to add a new, a new I mean, the, we are not the first to think about this phenomenon. Katz and Mayer were sort of in the 1990s discussing about uh, the possibility of losing connection over time uh, once you are in temporary layoff with previous employers. But we are, you know, the first to, to quantify this, this effect, to quantify this flow to emphasize that workers who lose the recall option, they do so in a cyclical manner. They do so at higher rates during recessions. And we are also going to measure a new stock, which is going to be the stock of uh, workers in jobless unemployment from temporary layoff, meaning workers who last exited uh, employment through, you know, via a temporary layoff, and then over time lost their recall option. And let me note that one team is going to be that this uh, flows, recall and loss of recall are endogenous and thus policy dependent. We then uh, want to understand, of course, what happened in the COVID-19 pandemic, um, where 50% of employed workers were moved to temporary layoff, and, and, and which is a distinguishing feature of this recession. Uh, a second distinguishing feature is that there was a very important response um, to this labor market dynamics, a fiscal package, the Paycheck Protection Program, which um, was larger than the Recovery Act, the 2009 Recovery Act, and was introduced to deliver forgivable loans to firms to, to preserve jobs, to, to preserve job retention. So we're going to study what role did PPP play in shaping the employment recovery. And we find that um, this program indeed was successful. We find large effects. And in particular, we are going to show that these effects have acted through preventing loss of recall. Oh, this was Peter. Okay. <laughs> We put this here. <laughs> okay, so, <clears throat> so I'm going to uh, mainly focus on the empirics of temporary layoff and employment, very, very brief briefly, um, give you the flavor of the model. The model is very rich. If I go through the details of the model, I would spend uh, quite some time. So then I'll uh, briefly tell you about the calibration of the model and move to the application. So uh, in this part, uh, we are going to argue that indeed uh, temporary layoff is, a, is, is important for uh, shaping the dynamics of unemployment over the cycle. So here we are going to start by looking at the stocks and then I, I will look at the flow in the next slide. And you see a table with uh, moments, first and second moments, regarding total unemployment U, jobless unemployment, and temporary layoff unemployment. Now, both jobless and, and temporary layoff unemployment are strongly countercyclical, and they are also highly volatile. At the same time, in red, you see the temporary layoff unemployment is only one eighth of total unemployment. So, you might conclude from this that temporary layoff unemployment is not going to play a big role for unemployment dynamics. But the fact that uh, the stock is low doesn't mean, of course, that the flow might instead be large. 
So here we are um, looking at the flows between the four states, we also include in activity, in pre-pandemic data. And as you can see, um, so first of all, um, uh, you, in, in blue, you see that uh, temporary layoff actually are account for one third of layoffs. Okay, so, so it, it's, it's, it has to be important to think about temporary layoff in this dimension. At the same time, if you focus on the second line, you're going to see that temporary layoff is a state which is very transient. The reason why it's very transient, there are two reasons for that. The first is that they have high exit rate. So they have high re-employment probabilities, as you can see in red. And, but they, they also have a high chance to exit that state to permanent jobless unemployment. So in green, you see the uh, probability of losing the recall option of moving from TL to JL. Now, um, at the same time, uh, the, the, so, so this, is an this is actually an important table because it, first of all, emphasized that the re-employment probability of temporary layoff unemployment, it's uh, you know, almost double than the re-employment probability of those workers in jobless unemployment. In addition, what we do here, we also look at the um, transition rate for workers in jobless unemployment conditional on being in temporary layoff unemployment the previous period. So worker who just lost their recall option. Why we do that? Because we want to provide further support to the idea um, that loss of recall is actually a meaningful phenomenon. This is measured based on survey. And so if it is, then we should expect that the probabilities the, uh, of conditional of workers in JL, conditional being TL yesterday, are actually very close to the unconditional probability of workers in JL. And that's what we uh, find. They're almost undistinguishable and different from the uh, probabilities of workers in temporary layoff unemployment. So, this also uh, brings additional support to the idea that these two, as measured in CPS, are distinct labor market states, temporary layoff unemployment and uh, jobless unemployment. Now, the last piece of evidence I want to uh, show you is uh, about cyclicality. So here, you see the cyclical properties of the five flows that we consider. Um, and the main message is going to be that temporary layoff, E to TS, are particularly important during recession. So first of all, more employed workers are put on temporary layoff, so counter-cyclical temporary layoff. In recession, fewer workers from temporary layoff are recalled to employment, so pro-cyclical recall probabilities. More workers move from TL to JL, so a counter-cyclical loss of recall. This is going to suggest uh, what we are going to call a direct, an indirect effect of temporary layoff. Uh, and in particular, we are going to argue that there are two ways in which temporary layoffs contributes to the increase in unemployment over a recession. One is the direct effect, and it's simply measured by the stock of workers in temporary layoff unemployment. And this is going to increase because of higher uh, layoff probability, temporary layoff probability, and lower recall probability. But there is also an indirect effect which cannot be measured by simply looking at the stocks. We, we need also to look at the, at the flows because the stocks are not going to uh, measure those workers who initially exit to temporary layoff and employment and then lose their recall option over time. So, uh, the stock of workers in jobless unemployment from temporary layoff unemployment, um, which is an indirect effect, which in, in turn is going to be associated to uh, 
uh, destabilizing effect. So what we are going to do, we are going to develop a methods to estimate this indirect effect. So we are going to uh, estimate a time series for workers in jobless unemployment who came from temporary layoff and employment. And we are going to uh, look at the property of that time series. So let me now show you some data. So this is, um, this is a plot of temporary layoff unemployment in pre-pandemic data. As you can see, temporary layoff unemployment is, as we, we already showed with, with numbers, is extremely counter-cyclical, but you also see some diminishing cyclicality, especially after the 1980s recession. This is actually one of the reasons uh, that while the past literature has been focusing quite a lot on temporary layoff unemployment in recent years, until COVID of course, there's been less attention to this labor market state. Now, however, if you add to this stock, the new stock that we compute, temporary layoff unemployment from, sorry, uh, jobless unemployment coming from temporary layoff unemployment, then you see a different picture. In particular, the, now we are measuring both the direct and the indirect contribution of temporary layoff unemployment to the increase of unemployment over recessions. And we see that, uh, especially in the later years, this is um, important during the Great Recession, the contribution of temporary layoff unemployment to Overall unemployment almost, almost doubled because of uh, the indirect effect. Now, of course, if you, if you then put COVID, uh, you don't see anything else. But what's, what's important to see here is that uh, most during COVID, the, 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 the things are different because most of the increase in total unemployment is accounted by the direct effect. And we're going to argue that the fact that the indirect effect was so small was uh, largely due to policy, and in particular to the PPP fiscal plan. Okay, so let me now show you the model. So this is a rich model because we have three states, and we model endogenous flows from the three states. So we are going to have, uh, so the starting point, first of all, is an RBC model with search and matching friction, a general equilibrium model with perfect consumption insurance and wage GDP via staggered Nash bargaining, as in previous work I have with Mark Gertler. And key variation to that setup are going to be endogenous separation into temporary layoff and employment. Uh, as well as endogenous separation into jobless unemployment. So we, we move away from this typical exogenous separation assumption and we have both separation into temporary and permanent unemployment. We are going to have recall hiring from temporary layoff unemployment and standard new hiring from jobless unemployment. And we, are, this is a twist, I will not have time to talk about that, but we also allow for temporary pay cuts to limit the extent of inefficient separation uh, um, due to uh, wage GDP. Okay, so some details and then I'll, I'll uh, stop with the model. So we're going to have workers who are unemployed if they are in the jobless unemployment state, they search for work in a very standard DMP style matching market. If they are in temporary layoff and employment, they wait for recall or loss of recall. To model separation, temporary and permanent separation, we're going to assume overhead costs, and in particular, um, idiosyncratic firm-specific overhead costs, which is going to lead to the firm to shut down, so to uh, separation into jobless unemployment of existing workers. At the same time, the firm will have some stock of temporary layoff workers, workers who are on temporary layoff, and those workers will also endogenously lose their recall option because the firm shut down. Uh, and then we have worker-specific overhead costs which are going to lead to uh, separation into temporary layoff. So firms are going to 
put uh, some workers above a certain uh, threshold for the for the uh, overhead costs, they're going to put a fraction of their workers on, on temporary layoff. For surviving firm, then uh, after separation, firms are going to run their business. If they survive, they're going to run capital, hire from jobless unemployment, recall from temporary layoff. And the way we model hiring and recall is through some adjustment costs, cost of adjusting the labor force. They are going to be symmetric, but with different parameters, which we are going to estimate in the data to match the different elasticity of recalls and new hires to the firm job value. And I already said about Nash bargaining. Okay, so, um, so we calibrate the model based on uh, pre-pandemic data. Uh, what we do, we match standard labor market stock and flows, but we also, of course, match um, um, moments that regards, you know, temporary layoff, the stocks of temporary layoff and the flows in and out of uh, temporary layoff. We uh, use both uh, long run moments and busy cycle feature. And so this is just you know, one, one uh, small thing I want to say. We, so we target some volatility, some labor market volatility. We don't ask the model to, to match those. We target some volatility of TL unemployment, JL unemployment, but we tie our ends in, in a number of ways and the model uh, does pretty well in, uh, in matching those data. So let me now conclude with the application to the COVID-19 recession. So, so first of all, let me clarify that we do not have an epi epidemiological model, so we do not uh, model the endogenous spread of the virus. What we do, we capture the economic um, effect of COVID through uh, introducing two structural shocks. One, and this is new in the literature, are because there are other papers who have been um, modeling COVID through lockdown shocks. So these are uh, MIT shocks, and they're going to move workers from employment to temporary layoff and employment. There is going to be a distinction between workers who are in temporary layoff through lockdowns and workers who are in temporary layoff through endogenous temporary layoff but they go to lockdown. And then we model the consequence of social distancing through, um, through shocks to effective TFP, which we interpret as a reduction in the utilization of capital and labor. Um, and we are going to add two parameters that are specific to the uh, workers in lockdown. So we're going to allow, for, and we're going to estimate these parameters together with the shocks. We are going to allow for the possibility that workers who are in, in temporary layoff due to lockdown might have a different probability of moving to permanent, uh, un uh, to jobless unemployment, of losing their recall option. And indeed, we're going to estimate that the degree of attachment of those workers in, in temporary layoff due to lockdown as opposed to uh, standard temporary layoff have a slightly higher degree of attachment. And we are also going to allow for the possibility that recalling back those workers during COVID might, uh, be, um, might imply uh, lower or different adjustment costs to firms. We're going also to introduce PPP. Um, we are going to follow kaplan moller violante PPP is going to be a diet model as a diet factor payment. Uh, we, are, of course, are going to, to calibrate the size of the program, 12.5% of GDP in, in the first two rounds, and about 5% of GDP in the second round. We're going to assume that 85% of, of that amount was actually forgiven, and we're going to assume that the program is unexpected, that the funds are used uh, 
uh, when they are allocated and that after the announcement, the, the, the availability of the funds and how they evolve is known. Then we estimate uh, the shocks, the series for the shocks, and we estimate the two additional parameters to match the evolution of the stocks and the evolution of the flows during the COVID. And we, we do well. So finally, uh, I have a couple of slides and then I'm, I'm done. So we uh, study the role of policy. So we keep uh, decision rule parameters and shocks, but we remove PPP. And what we find is that um, actually PPP was successful in, in what, it did, it, what it was intended to do, so prevent um, uh, destruction of matches and uh, encourage job retention. We find monthly employment gains of uh, more than two percentage points in the first six months with those gains that are fading out over time, but they are still about 1% after more than a year. In particular, the mechanism is going to be the following. The uh, PPP um, simulated uh, recalls. The cumulative number of recalls over this first six months actually double because of PPP. And because of higher recalls, so these also induce lower uh, a reduction in, in the loss of recall. And to make this point more powerful in a, in a more uh, visually, so what we do, we, um, we plot here three series. So that's, that's a bit of an unusual way to show a counterfactual, but so we have, we have in blue temporary layoff and employment in the data. In red, we have temporary layoff and employment plus jobless unemployment from temporary layoff and employment in the data. So uh, that's the direct and the indirect effect of temporary layoff and employment in the data during the COVID recession. And, and here, what we are plotting, the difference between the blue and the red is the increase in jobless unemployment from temporary layoff and employment in uh, the counterfactual absent PPP. And as you can see, uh, there is a significant effect in terms of uh, preventing workers of moving from temporary layoff and employment to jobless unemployment. So let me conclude by just mentioning directions for future work. So in, in the paper that we, we wrote, the, the, the cost of loss of recall is that uh, moving to jobless unemployment means inheriting uh, lower reemployment rates. Uh, but the, there is a different type of cost, and uh, we don't have that in the model, which is the fact that uh, loss of recall is also going to dissipate much specific capital. So it would be interesting to consider heterogeneous match quality. And once you start thinking about match specific capital, there is also this uh, idea that has been put forward actually by uh, Davis and Coters, by Steve Davis and Coters, that uh, these programs might actually have had a cost. They preserve matches, they preserve employment, but they might have hindered reallocation. And this could be particularly true for, uh, uh, for PPP because it was, uh, PPP was targeting smaller firms. And so this might have indirect efficient reallocation. So I think I'm in time. Um, I wanted to show another picture, but maybe later if it comes out in the discussion, can I go back to the slides in I case? OK, good. So thanks. Thank you very much. <laughs> Antonella. Thanks a lot. I think I forgot to mention that you come from Bocconi University, okay. so at least I, I should do it now. And with this, I would like to give the floor right away to uh, Fabien Postelvinet from the University College London and the Institute for Fiscal Studies with his discussion of the paper. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. So thank you, Antonella, for a, a 
crystal clear presentation, and thanks to the organizers for uh, giving me the opportunity to read the, this paper and uh, document myself about temporary layoffs in you know, sort of a more uh, precise way than, than I probably uh, would have done otherwise, so I'm, I'm glad I did. Um, let me start with a, you know, maybe a kind of a short history of the thinking about temporary layoffs in, uh, 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 I suppose, macro labor. Um, for a long time, the, as Antonella has kind of hinted, the, the conventional view has been the temporary layoffs are not important because they're a very small fraction of, of the total stock of unemployment. Uh, now, recently, um, a more recent literature, with, you know, starting with um, Hall and Kudliak, uh, Moscarini and Fujita, et cetera, uh, have emphasized that flows between temporary layoffs and uh, employment are important and cyclical. Therefore, temporary layoffs are important to understand unemployment dynamics. Now, what, uh, oh, um, I should mention as well that obviously even the stock of workers on temporary layoffs, as we've seen in the picture that uh, Antonella showed, has become, you know, of first order importance in, in, in April 2020 with, uh, you know, with the pandemic recession. And that's obviously been, been emphasized in a very recent literature. Now, this paper uh, uh, highlights the role of uh, a new flow um, or um, another flow, uh, which is large and cyclical, and that's the flow between temporary layoffs and you know, what uh, the authors called jobless unemployment and uh, what others have called unemployment without recall. Or I can't remember what the, the other terms were, but you know, this is what, what uh, you know, standard labor economists would think of as being unemployment. So that's my brief history. I, I, I think this is, uh, you know, this is a, a, an extremely fair point that the authors uh, sort of motivate their paper on. Um, indeed, in the data, these flows are, are, uh, um, are large. The authors put special emphasis on the flow from uh, uh, so temporary layoffs to, to jobless unemployment, which they term loss of recall. Uh, if you look at numbers, this is the table that uh, Antonella showed uh, in, in, at the beginning of her uh, presentation. Uh, the f those are flow rates uh, between uh, different labor, the three, the, sorry, the four labor market states that, uh, that uh, are emphasized in the paper. Um, so here, uh, the flows between temp well, from temporary layoff to employment, 43.5%, from jobless unemployment to employment on average over the 35 years of you know, the 35 year period that Antonella is looking at, 24.4%, so you know, a little bit over half that of temporary layoff to unemployment. And so um, workers on temporary layoffs, uh, layoff have a much higher probability of returning to employment than workers on, uh, you know, who are just unemployed. Uh, what this paper emphasizes is this, uh, this number highlighted in red here is that the flow from temporary uh, um, layoff into jobless unemployment is, is quite substantial, is, is almost 20%. Uh, now, one number that is not so much emphasized in the paper and which I'd like to emphasize now is, is that 2.2% of jobless unemployment to temporary layoffs. Uh, if, you, if you just crank out the numbers very quickly, uh, you know, the, the, the jobless stock, the stock of jobless unemployed is about a little bit less than seven times larger than the job of workers on, the stock of workers on temporary layoff. And so if you take 2.2% of a stock that's seven times larger, uh, you get, uh, a, you know, in levels, you get a number of workers who move from jobless unemployment to temporary layoffs that is, you know, sort of not very far, or at least a similar order of magnitude, to the number who move from temporary layoff to jobless unemployment. And that sort of begs the question of you know, what, what is it that we're measuring here? What, is it, what does it mean to go from jobless unemployment to you know, moving back to temporary layoffs? Temp temporary layoff is a situation where you expect to be recalled to your old employer. So what, you know, what, what does it mean to you know, go back after a certain duration in unemployment into temporary layoff? And more generally, uh, the question I want to ask here is, what is measured, when, when, what, what does this, uh, this uh, temporary layoff label um, you know, that, that is, is seen in the, in the that is you know, constructed from, from, um, uh, from, by the authors from, from, from CPS data, what exactly does it, does it measure? Now, what the authors say here, the, the way the authors interpret it, interpret you know, a, a move from temporary layoff to jobless unemployment is as a loss of recall. 
Um, and what they said, I'm going to give a quote from the paper, if a transition from temporary uh, layoff to jobless unemployment represents a true loss of recall, and I've just lost my timer, oh, oh it's back, um, then we would expect the reemployment probability of such workers to be similar to the unconditional reemployment probability of workers in jobless unemployment. Otherwise, we would expect the reemployment probability of workers moving from temporary layoff to jobless unemployment to remain high. But uh, I mean, that might well be true in, in a world with constant hazard or in a completely unconditional world. But uh, if you introduce, you know, for any reason, duration dependence, for example, in, in uh, you know, the sort of process of, of returning to employment from unemployment, uh, and if the uh, temporary layoff label is correlated in some way with short durations, then we would expect the exact same patterns to occur as highlighted by the authors. Um, so I, I've, I've sort of had this uh, sort of half jokey title here of my silly model of temporary layoff. So let me let me give you a, you know what I cannot characterize otherwise than as, as a silly model of temporary layoffs. So a labor market in steady state. Uh, so I have nothing to say about cyclicality here. Workers can be either employed or unemployed. Um, you know, just like the authors do in their theory part, I just condition out an activity here for simplicity. Uh, when employed workers in my, my simplified world all face the same IID job loss risk, and when unemployed, uh, well, each worker, which I'll label as I, have, has a, an individual specific job finding probability FI, so some workers have a high, actually a job finding probability of one per period, so they find a job with certainty at the end of one month. And a fraction alpha of workers have a lower job finding probability, some number between zero and one. Okay, so not a very, not a very sophisticated model. Uh, and then on top of that, I'm going to uh, affix a, a label to to each worker, a type TI, uh, either TL or JL. That type is going to change stochastically over time following some stochastic process, which essentially is a first order, it's not exactly a first order Markov in my simulation, but essentially that. It's completely independent of their, their job finding rate. So in, in that sense, my label TL or GL in this model is a, is a completely meaningless label. It's just a label. And, uh, and then I, I try to fit my model to, to the author's data and, uh, you know, the, the, well, the transition matrices that, that the authors uh, show in the, in, in the paper. And uh, well, you know, here's the result. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's not bad for such a silly model. And in particular, it's, uh, you know, it's able to capture the fact that the probability of moving from temporary layoff to employment is apparently much higher than that of moving from jobless unemployment to employment. And also the fact that uh, if you condition on being previously in in, uh, um, in uh, temporary layoff, people who are in jobless unemployment have a much lower probability of, of returning to, uh, to, to, um, to, to a job. So the key features that, you know, the key kind of numbers that the authors emphasize are, are, are actually uh, you know, replicated by this model where temporary layoff or, or jobless unemployment is a meaningless label. Now, the mechanism, of course, in this model is that it takes at least one month for workers to make a temporary layoff to jobless unemployment transition because, you know, that, those, that label gets changed every month or, or gets changed with some probability every month. So thus, all of the high job finding rate workers are gone by the time that the first job, you know, the first uh, label change occurs. And so workers in the uh, JL previously in TL sample, so who used to be in the temporary layoff state and are now in jobless unemployment, are uh, selected. They're negatively selected in the sense that, they're, you know, they're, they're all the, the people with, with low job finding rates. Now, of course, again, you know, uh, let me emphasize, I don't believe that this is the tr true model of, you know, what's going on. This is a silly model. I <laughs> can't emphasize that enough. But, you know, it does replicate you know, this aspect of the data, at least. And um, I was wondering whether, you know, those, you know, anything that the authors could say of how much of that is going on in the data. And I think the empirical, um, um, you know, part of, of the paper would, would benefit from, you know, having a, a little bit more sort of in-depth conditioning on observables and maybe an al a duration, a duration analysis in the, uh, in the um, you know, in, in the sort of uh, uh, 
diagno diagnosis, I guess, about measurement, uh, you know, what, what it is that is measured uh, by, by temporary layoffs. So that was my, my so I guess, my points about the empirical uh, uh, part of the paper. Let me just very briefly move to the, uh, to the, the, uh, the model, the GHT model, as in Gertler, Hockfeld, Trigari. Um, so yeah, this, this, uh, this slide is a festival of acronyms. I'm, I'm sorry about that. But uh, so the, the GHT model builds upon the Gertler and Trigari model, which is you know, a, a classic paper uh, and published in, you know, well, 13 years ago in the JP. Uh, it's a very sophisticated, uh, c contrary to my silly model, it's a very sophisticated DSG model with matching frictions a la Diamond, Morrison, Pissaritis, featuring a whole you know, large number of moving parts. Um, uh, in particular, worker level transitory idiosyncratic cost shocks causing workers, well, causing temporary layoffs, job or firm level idiosyncratic cost shocks causing permanent firm closures and job destruction and a whole array of other things such as real wage, real wage inertia, uh, capital, capacity utilization, et cetera, et cetera. So very sophisticated machinery. Uh, on the other hand, the, the, the model only has one aggregate shock to TFP, uh, at least outside of uh, COVID times. And it does a very good job of you know, mimicking 35 years of, of data, roughly 35 years of aggregate data on labor market dynamics. So that's, that's you know, quite impressive. Uh, now, I want to make two points about the model, at least one, one and a half point, I guess. So the authors describe, the, uh, as, as uh, Antonella emphasized during her conclusion, temporary layoffs as destabilizing, right? So they say, we place particular emphasis on the following destabilizing effect of temporary layoffs, namely that a sizable fraction of workers who initially exit employment for temporary layoffs are not recalled. Well, that's true. But uh, in the model, you know, so, you know, is, it, is it a good thing or a bad thing that, I mean, temporary layoffs in the model, they're a good thing, right? Uh, they're, the possibility of recall is a way for firms to escape uh, surge costs. You wouldn't want to get rid of temporary layoffs in that model. Uh, in fact, that same model could be interpreted as a, as just as an aside, just because I come from, from the UK, but this same model could uh, probably be, you know, be used as a representation of UK style zero hour contracts, some kind of flexible type of, uh, you know, of, of, of work scheduling. Um, and it would say that this is also a good thing, something that's up for debate, but in this model where, you know, essentially workers are risk neutral uh, because there in, there's insurance within the family, uh, you know, there are surge costs that can be circumvented using temporary layoffs. You know, uh, you know they're a good thing, <laughs> temporary layoffs. So uh, the question, I guess, now is what policy conclusions can be drawn? I mean, is it, it, we're in a very kind of sophisticated model with rigidity and with matching frictions with externalities, et cetera, et cetera. So is it the case that in this model, private job destruction, job creation decisions and separations into temporary layoffs, are, are they suboptimal in some way? Do they differ from, from the planners? Uh, is there some form of dynamic inefficiency? I, you know, this, I, I, I guess those are questions that you know, I, I think would be very uh, interesting to address with, with this model. And finally, uh, just in my last minute and a half, uh, talking about the pandemic and, and, the, and the PPP policy. So, uh, well, you have to sort of give it a little bit of help with, with extra, uh, extra shocks, but the model does do an impressive job of capturing aggregate labor market dynamics during the pandemic, even though it was calibrated to pre-pandemic uh, data. Uh, and one of the author's messages uh, in, in the paper is that PPP was successful in fulfilling its intended purpose of encouraging firms to rehire workers on temporary layoffs. So this is just a small point I want to make here, and it's kind of unfair to make that point now in a way, uh, because it, it's a point that, that you know, could apply to a lot of, of the literature around, around PPP. But uh, the way that PPP is modeled in the paper looks very much like a free lunch given to the economy. It's, you know, it's essentially, it's a bit more sophisticated than that, but it's essentially a positive productivity shock that partially offsets the negative COVID shock. So as such, it's not, it's not entirely surprising that it, you know, it encourages firms or it, it sort of it offsets some of the negative effects of the, of the COVID shock. Uh, and so, you know, I, I, I guess my, my final point here is that probably, you know, it, it'd be useful to sort of go a little bit further and, and build in sort of, you know, anticipations of, you know, having to pay for, for PPP a little bit later maybe and see what, you know, what, uh, 
um, you know, what, what, how that changes the results. And with my seven, seven seconds, five seconds to go, I, I'm just going to close here and thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you very much also for sticking for the time limit so perfectly. Um, maybe I just give the floor quickly first to you. Maybe you want to react directly. Yeah, sure, to, sure. So yeah. thanks, Fabian, for this um, insightful discussion. Of course, your, all the points you raise are, are uh, well taken. So uh, let me start with uh, very briefly to, to comment on what uh, is this measure of temporary layoff versus jobless unemployment. And I, I would like to emphasize here that we, in, in using uh, this, this measure, we, we are within a very large literature that goes back to cuts and mayor in the 90s that has been uh, revamped recently because of COVID. And, but of course, there, there, there is also an alternative literature that uh, think about recalls, and this is associated to the seminal paper in particular by Fujita and Moscarini, they think about uh, uh, recalls and unemployment in a slightly different way without uh, really distinguishing between these, these two states using uh, the CPS data. As, as we do, and, 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 and this important paper has, has actually encouraged uh, all others that have been working with this definition to sort of justify it better, and we, we sort of entertained this a bit later, so we, what we did was to show this, this table, we produced this table where we have this uh, right constant as a rate. Let me, let me actually say that with this transition matrix, we can actually replicate some uh, duration dependence uh, data that have been documented by other people. Uh, but, um, you know, there is also other type of evidence which points to the fact that uh, workers in temporary layoff unemployment do behave differently. Uh, they do have behavior which is uh, different. They do search much less than workers in, in uh, and, and so even if it was for that fact, that would be a meaningful distinction that workers base their behavior on their actual perception of whether they are going to be uh, recalled back. But yes, we, 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 I, it's, it's a well taken point that we need to deepen a bit more uh, this, this aspect, as has been done by other people. Now, regarding this 2.2% uh, uh, flow of people move from JL to TL, actually, that, that's, we don't have that in the model because it's much smaller, at least in terms of uh, uh, probabilities. Um, but, you know, you can think of part of it being measurement error, of course, and part of it being actually workers who realized that they, they didn't think they had a, in their hand a, an option to be recalled, and actually they, they, they do uh, at a later stage. So I don't think that's a completely absurd um, phenomenon. Now, regarding the <laughs> policy prescription, uh, we didn't get into this, uh, into this um, um, you know, uh, you know, uh, we didn't entertain this, and we didn't do it um, for uh, yeah a number of reasons, including the fact that we we would be missing very important aspect that I mentioned at the end of my presentation uh, of uh, recalls. You know, we would need to have heterogeneous match quality and think about reallocation and and um, and preserving match capital. Um, now, um, yes, it's, and finally, yes, to your late, late, last small comment, yes, it's true that, and that, uh, but it's true that, uh, um, you know, it's, it's maybe not so surprising that uh, this PPP achieved what we did. Um, but, okay, so first of all, the, the point of the paper is to quantify it. Uh, 
it's, it's you know, a quantitative paper, so what we want to do is to quantified, and we also have a structural model, and so it's not only quantified, but uh, emphasize the mechanism, and, and in particular, emphasize the importance of this additional flow of, uh, you know, mitigating this additional flow that we document. But uh, yes, we could somehow uh, take into account the fact that uh, there, this is not a free lunch, and there will be some. Thank you. Thank you. So the floor is open to any questions from the audience. If there are none, then I, of course, have a question. <laughs> but if there is, then please go ahead. Because I mean, I, for my, my question that I had is because this is, again, a paper based on US data. Now, when you look at uh, also a bit the success story that we had in Euro Europe during COVID with this short term uh, or this uh, short um, uh, how do you call it, this uh, um, short, uh, um, basically short-time work schemes. Um, they were kind of a bit different in the setup. So it was not so much loans to the companies, but rather direct transfer. Would you think that this kind of mechanisms, I mean, that, that it matters whether you, you do it like as, as a loan or whether you do it as a direct transfer or would that not change so, your results? So um, okay, so, so actually the picture I wanted to show was uh, exactly about the, the difference because I, I was expecting yeah. people thinking about Euro versus the US. And uh, so the, the one thing I, I it's, it's at the very end of the, it's the last picture I added it today. It's, it's not part of the paper, but I, I, I thought it was interesting to make this point uh, here. Uh, okay, so here you see uh, the, in the first uh, plot, you see the unemployment rate. In, it's a different scale, just to make uh, you know the dynamics comparable in the United States and in the Euro area. And when you look at the COVID recession, you see this enormous jump in unemployment in the U.S. and a very, uh, in relative terms, a very small increase in the unemployment rate in in the Euro area. And then that, that was has been you know some time ago. I was super surprised about that. And then I, I uh, discovered that actually temporary layoff, they do exist in, they have a different definition, but they, they, they've been used. Uh, it's part of these job retention schemes that you yep. mentioned, it's just one of those, but they, they've been used. It, they're just counted differently. Uh, temporary layoff workers in the US are counted among the unemployed and temporary layoff workers are counted among the employed in, in uh, the Euro area. So then I constructed these two counterfactual where in one case I take away temporary layoff workers from US unemployment and in the other I add temporary layoff workers in the Euro area to the unemployed. And then you see one is the middle plot and the other is the, and you see that um, the, the dynamics are Similar. strikingly uh, similar when, when you do that. Now, of course, the, the most substantial question is, is you know, whether these objects are the same and whether they work differently or not. In, in, and, and even the definition are different because in the, in the United States, the definition, so you workers are classified as being on temporary layoff if they, um, if they um, have uh, an indication of a date sometime in the future uh, to be going back to their previous employer or if they have some expectations that in the next six months they will go back. So this is the definition. Instead in the Euro area the definition is a bit more, is, a, is stricter because uh, you are on temporary layoff if uh, uh, you have an expectation to go back to work within the next three months or if, uh, um, and, and, uh, not or, and you are receiving at least 50% of your wage. So that's a much uh, uh, definition with a much stronger attachment than in the US. So presumably it would be interesting to, to, um, to, you know, to, to try to measure loss of recall, which must be present also in Europe and, and the extent to it, but I expect it to be different. Now, this is a bit orthogonal to what you ask, which is more about, um, I guess, uh, you know, the, the, so 
So I haven't thought about you know loan versus subsidies. No, but, but it goes in, into directly okay. this this direction that if you have a different mechanism, you still show that the, the, yeah, the, 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 it doesn't really matter too much for the results of your paper apparently. So that I think is a, uh, is an interesting result. Now with this, I would like to give the the floor and the audience the chance to also ask questions. Check whether there's anything going on online, but apparently not. Luke, Luke has a question. I think we can. So, so Antonella, um, I understand you have to rush a bit over your model, over the time constraints, but uh, one important parameter is this uh, firm specific overhead cost that you introduce. And I was just wondering for the benefit of the audience if you could give an example of what you know what they would capture in the real world yeah so it, it would capture uh, costs at the you know that are not directly associated to the use of uh, a particular input so you can think of you know cost of running the business like Paying the rents, paying the utilities, administrative costs—that's that's the the idea. And actually, the PPP was uh, designed to be used. Firms could use PPP both to pay for wages and to pay for this kind of costs, which they they at least part of those they they were still in place. Uh, even though they were not operating uh, during COVID. Yes, Francesco Lippi, with the mic. Thank here. you. Yes. <clears throat> so, just a clarification about a point that was raised by Fabien. Who are these agents moving from the jobless unemployment to the recall unemployment? Is this like some statistical? Yes. Assessment margin, or is is there really like a type that can you know? Because if I lose a job, I lose a job, then I'm not attached to anything. So, so, so what does it mean to go back to a temporary unemployment? Yeah. So, so we haven't uh, dicked into that flow because it's smaller uh, in at least in terms of you know, may, the probability of making that transition. Um, and we don't have that flow in the model, so maybe we could, uh, we could uh, you know, think a bit more about that. The way we thought about it was uh, either measurement error, which is, you know, this is a CPS, it's, uh, you know, a survey, we, we do have measurement error. Or, uh, you know, it could also capture an actual phenomenon of workers that initially they just, uh, you know, think they, they have no, they, they lost their job permanently. And then some, something, you know, comes out, some new information, they, you know, and they realize that actually they have a recall option standing in place. Or, or maybe that there is, a, you know, some, effort in the very short term of the firm to uh, reconnect. Um, I mean, there, you know, uh, the, yeah, this kind of. Uh. So thank you very much to both of you, you, both Antonella and Fabien. Um, and with this, we conclude our first session um, of this conference. And uh, we now here in the, uh, in the hall have the chance to go for coffee. Um, the break is 15 minutes. And um, then I hope to see you all back uh, either online or he here in the room and um, looking forward to the next session. So thanks again. Thank you very much. Thank you.